G'day and welcome back. In this video we are finally reviewing our caravan setup. And what better place to do it than the stunning beaches of Tiwa where we've been camping for the last couple of weeks. Get down in the car, one time give it all, bust it open hard, let me see your job. Get down in the car, one time give it all, bust it open hard, let me see your job. So, why now? Well, we've spent the last two years taking this van to some of the most stunning and remote locations around Australia. From the 40 degree heat in the red centre, to the wild windy west, Sand dunes in the south. Let me see and the tropical storms on the east coast. We've been traveling, living, and working in this van and really putting the build quality and performance of this van to the test. Before we get into this review, I think it's important to say that we bought our van dealer new sub 70k. Yes, you heard me correctly. The van was sub 70k. And I know what you'll be saying, but Duncan, you bought this van pre-COVID. Everything is way more expensive now. And yes, this van would cost you more today than we bought it for. But I'll still say that this dual axle off-road van comes in at one of the lowest cost options in its class. And if you've ever been on the market for an off-road van, you'll appreciate that people are paying two, three, and even four times more than what we paid for this van. Now, price isn't everything. And just because something is more expensive, does it really make it better? Well, that's a question you're gonna have to answer for yourself. But what we can do today is give you a full rundown and tour of what you get for your money with this Coromel Pioneer Evolution XC. And our honest feedback on what's gone wrong with this van after being on the road for two years, as well as our thoughts on modifications and improvements that we have and would make in the future. It also needs to be said that we are in no way sponsored by Coromel and our review is our own opinion of the van based on our experience, nothing more, nothing less. So enough preamble, let's get into the tour. I'm Duncan, this is Sophie and we have now been traveling for two years in our Pioneer Evolution XC 632S Coromel caravan. It's a all-terrain off-road caravan and up until this point, we didn't really know if we wanted to do a van review or van tour because this is our first van and we didn't feel like we were particularly qualified to speak on the matter. But now we've been traveling for two years. We thought we actually have given this van a good run in and thought what better time on TY Beach yeah. than to do a in-depth van tour and review and tell you about some of the, the specs, obviously for you van nerds. And then also just our, you know, pros, cons, takeaways and also capability. capability and yeah exactly and what this van is running in terms of off the shelf and what we've done to it so far specs so the overall length is about 8.36 meters however we always say nine meters for caravan parks so they don't try and put us on a small site with our tow bar over the edge external body length is about 6.3 meters external body width is about 2.48 meters i think you're limited about 2.5 for vans, caravans, trailers, for getting them on the road so you can fit in with other traffic. Travel height is about three meters, 3.05 meters to be exact. However, we have had new suspension, which has added an extra lift to the van. So I would hazard that it's a little bit taller than that now. Internal height, head height is about 1.98 meters height, which is plenty. Tar is 2,600 kilos. ATM is about 3,500 kilos or 3,475 to be exact. 
payload is approximately 800 kilos, so quite a good payload. And then ball weight, so the weight you can actually put on your tow ball, not that it's a tow ball, it's an articulating hitch, but on your tow ball is about 227 kilos. So they are the specs for you van nerds. Let's get into the rest. Moving on to the sh all important chassis of a van, which is probably one of the most important things in a caravan, especially in an off-road caravan when you're taking it down gnarly tracks. So it's a six inch thick FRV punched steel chassis, which is a lot better than a lot of the four inch chassis you're seeing in vans nowadays. So extra thick helps with, yeah, I guess not, not tearing, not breaking. Extra strength is always good in my book and the punched holes in the steel along the chassis, which run the whole way down the van, help reduce weight, which is also important when you're towing because you can use that weight for other things like alcohol and beers and stuff like that, which if you get enough of them, do weigh a lot. Another cool thing on this chassis is the back here, you've actually got two big steel skids underneath the van here, which help protect the back of your van and the underside of your van from, I guess, hitting stuff, especially when you're going down gnarly tracks or into deep kind of undercuts where your van may bottom out. They just hit first, support the van so you're not tearing up anything important underneath. Another cool part of this van is you've actually got these, I like to call them rock sliders, but they're not as thick as conventional rock sliders you'd have on a four-wheel drive. They're more like bumper bars or you know, scrub protection. So when you're going through gnarly tracks where there's rocks or tree stumps or anything like that, these bumper bars will hit first and that'll protect the composite on the side of your van from getting any big scratches. And they've done a great job. We haven't had anything actually tear against the van, but that's probably my driving. We haven't actually hit anything yet. So I'm sure they do their job and they're one of the things that you never really want to put to the test. So, one of the most important things for an off-road caravan like this is its capacity for off-grid bush camping. So this van comes with 300 watts of solar on the roof, however we do supplement that with a 150 watt solar blanket because we're constantly charging devices like cameras, drones and everything else. It comes with two times 90 litre freshwater tanks, so a total of 180 litres of fresh water, 120 litres of grey water if you're storing all your grey water. The van comes with two 150 watt deep cycle batteries, but you could swap that out for a lithium setup if you wanted to, to save weight. The van also has two 8.5 to 9 kilo bottles of gas around the front here, which helps power your fridge when you're off grid, because it's a three-way fridge that runs off gas, alternator when it's hooked up to the car, and 240 volt when it's plugged into power or shore power on a caravan site. So this van comes with an Alco fully articulating off-road suspension hitch as standard, which has actually been really helpful because two things, it allows you to move both ways up and down, forwards and back, which helps when you're doing gnarly tracks because it means this hitch is doing all the work moving around and your van is staying pretty level. The hitch also locks off when secure. If you want to see how to do this wrong, look back on one of our earlier videos when we actually first started towing and the hitch came off because we didn't secure it properly. But when you lower the hitch down, this will pop out, revealing the green piece, which means that the van is locked off. So when you're going over big bumps, speed bumps in our case, and so on, that this will not come off the van and it locks away. Make sure that you press this down and reset it every time. That's the mistake we made. And if you don't reset it, if the green is out and you put it on, it will show locked, but it's not locked. So always reset this by pushing on the top and pushing that in. And then when you load onto the van, it'll pop back out and that means you're locked away. So suspension, wheels and brakes, which are very, very important in an off-road caravan, especially in our estimation. So this caravan originally had Sport X independent suspension, which was a kind of a wishbone suspension formation, which we found worked really, really well. You had, in, you had coil springs on each one of those and wishbones in between. And we had one wheel up here and another one down here on a bumpy site and we've taken on some gnarly tracks and it's handled really, really well and been really stable. That suspension system was actually recalled by Coromel and they've replaced it free of charge with a new suspension system, which is a, got a much bigger lift, which is nice. If you're a four-wheel drive enthusiast, having high lift is always cooler looking, especially on the four-wheel drive. So it's nice that this thing now sits off the ground. I mean, practically it's good because you have more clearance, which is always a good thing for an off-road caravan. So the new suspension they've put on is actually a completely different system. They've lost the wishbone and it's now a fully independent 
four coil system and it's the Cruise Master XT Freestyle Edition. We've been putting this through its paces in the last couple of weeks and it's probably too early to say. However, it does handle really, really well, has a higher lift and has been buttery smooth and great weight distribution for the van. So probably too early to review this suspension. However, early signs show that it's very, very good and possibly even better than the original suspension. So definitely an upgrade there. Really nice that Coromel swapped it out and did it all free of charge. So now we've got brand new suspension on this thing after two years. So that's a win in my book any day. Now our wheels are Bridgestone all terrains or light truck tires. We've had the same set on for two years and the tread is still really good to be honest with you. It comes with two spare tires on the back and we've only had to swap one tire out when we got a screw or a nail in one of them when we were doing the Unidata track or the Gate Central through Australia. So these tires have been perfect. Don't have a lot to compare them to, but if they don't pop and they run and they've still got a lot of tread on them, that's a good sign for me. The next thing, it's a fully electric Alco braking system. They're drum brakes. They've been, they've been pretty good. I mean, we've got the controller in the car so we can turn our brakes up and down. We usually cruise at about six or seven. And then if you're doing really heavy hills, we might crank that up just to get the caravan braking so your car's not braking in the van is slowly pushing you forward. So finding that balance is a hard one, but that over time will change. And when you first get a caravan, brakes will be a lot tighter. So you actually probably only have that down at three or four, and then over time increase it as your brakes settle in. So we run a six most of the time, moving to a seven or eight on the downhill stretches. So the actual frame and outer shell of the van, it's a composite board. It's actually only four pieces in total. So there's the floor, two walls, and a roof that wraps the whole way around. And that's all joint with an aluminum joint, which holds it all together. So there's no steel frame, there's no timber frame, which means there's less things to go wrong. And we have found that nothing is really moved. Nothing has come away from anything. Nothing is broken apart. So, so far, we're really happy with the frame. Because it's a composite board with a hard plastic outside on one side and a hard plastic outside on the other, on the inside, and in between dense foam, it has been very thermally efficient. So we found in sub freezing temperatures down south, it has held its heat pretty well. And up in the north, so the Northern Territory on 40 degree days, it has kept, kept us pretty cool inside. However, you know, there's only so much a van can do on its own. So composite board, thermal efficient, and it's been really good. Nothing's moved. That's the one thing with a van, especially when you're going off road on lots of corrugations is you, you really don't know what your van's gonna do until you start rattling the thing around. And we've found that the aluminum joint has held everything really well. And because there's only really four moving parts to go wrong, nothing has moved that much and it has all stayed very intact. And I know from speaking to other caravanners, that's one of the big gripes with some of the earlier vans or the non-off-road vans is they do move around a bit and things start to like get little air gaps between frames and walls. So that hasn't happened with this van. I know it's more standard now with vans to be this composite board, but definitely a good point with the van and we've really liked having composite. Less things to go wrong, always a win. So while I'm up here talking to the storage and finishes, van comes standard with a rock guard. So that's when you're flicking rocks up behind you. This bounces everything back down towards the ground and stops it from hitting your van. It's done really well. It's taken the brunt of a lot of stones, especially on the Great Central, Unidata track where it's all that iron stony, gravelly, sometimes massive chunks of rock and it's held up well. There's a few little tear holes, but that's to be expected after two years of really hammering the front of this thing. We carry two spare jerrys on the front here. I believe they're about 20 liters each. That's for our off-roading and longer trips so we don't have to fill up so much or if you find a cheap petrol station, fill these bad boys up gets you another half tank on the car. Underneath me here, we've got two bins. They both pull out. On the left here, we've got our two 8.5 kilogram gas bottles that slide out. And on the other side, you've got space for a barbecue. We currently put two 25 liter drum fresh water. So we have extra fresh water when we are free camping like this. You never want to run out of water. Another unique thing with this van that you don't see on many vans is the windows. So these are actually automotive glass. So they are proper windows 
that come out as one continuous piece. So the benefit of these windows is that they don't scratch like your plastic windows you get in a lot of vans. So when you're going through brush or next to trees or anything like that, if you do get a little scrape along here, there's no marks whatsoever. I mean, that does mean that if you hit a corner, it might chip or it might break. Hasn't for us, and we have had a couple of like near tree scrape events. So not something they do standard on vans, but it's something that I think should be more standard on vans. Glass windows are great for cleaning, they're great for everything. So way better than plastic in my opinion. We've seen some friends with vans that have plastic windows and they've gone down some bush tracks. By the end of it, they've just got pinstripes all over it and it's marked up to all hell. And they, I don't know, you need to buff or polish it, that back out. I don't even know if you can fix that. So glass windows, definitely a plus for this van compared to others. So another big thing while we're doing the outside is storage. You know, lots of vans have lots of storage. For us, this has been perfect. We've got a big storage locker here on one side where we can fit everything in. This goes all the way through the van. So we keep everything in here like your, you know, awning poles and chairs and cables and just about everything. On the other side, so the other half of this is made up with an actual storage locker which comes all the way out. And you can see this thing's massive. We've got massive fins in here. We keep all our spear fishing gear, stuff for the car, cleaning equipment and everything. This is a great size locker. And because it's kind of an outdoor locker, you can put sandy, salty stuff in here and you're not really worried about much happening because it'll just drain through to the underside of the van anyway and out the bottom. So massive, great storage lockers. This van also comes with an outdoor shower. So when you are beach camping like we are now and you come out of the ocean and you wanna get the salt off and you don't wanna go through into the inside shower, you can just hook this thing up, powered from the van so you get hot and cold water so you can have a hot outdoor shower, which is luxury in the colder climates and just luxury everywhere. Like when you get out and it's cool and you can chuck the hot water on and be outside and just be like, I don't know, there's something incredibly luxurious or bougie about being able to have hot water while you're outside. So I would say that we don't use this as much as we should, but when we are beach camping like we are now, it is constantly open and it's a fresh water rinse when we get off the beach. So like I said, on the back of the van, you've got two spare tires that you carry around everywhere with you. Super easy to get on and off and nice from a comfort perspective to have two spare tires when you've got four tires on a van. Do you have a massive bash plate and storage for more jerry cans and a kind of like a, a bull bar or a, a back bar here. On top, we have a very odd thing. It's a massive spoiler, which you do not see on any other vans. Now, this is probably the thing we get asked about most is what does the spoiler do? And the honest answer is we don't have a clue. If you ask people, they'll say it does one of two things. One, it's for aerodynamics which means that it helps push air down at the back like a conventional spoiler would and hold the back of your van down or give you stability at speed. However, if you're going that fast in a caravan, you are, you know, you're, you're, you're racing the thing and I just don't see how they would ever be fast enough for that thing to work as a spoiler. The other interesting thing that it's meant to do is help with airflow off the back of your van and eddying around here. So it prevents, apparently prevents all that red dirt caking to the back of your van because it pushes air around here and keeps a kind of eddy reduction zone or vortex which kind of pushes dust off the back of your van. It's very hard for us to comment on that because when you've driven for a week on nine hour drives through really thick red dirt through the center of Australia, your van's pretty covered in dirt. I will say that the back does look a lot cleaner than the rest of the van so maybe it is doing something. Who knows, but that's a spoiler. So other finishes, which is just more storage. This van has a ton of storage on the outside and even more on the inside, but you've got two steel storage lockers here, which drain straight out as well. So we put fishing gear and anything wet in here. You got another one of these on the other side. So you got to do your standard things like power outlets, USB ports, signal for reception and so on. I will say that we almost never use these. They're nice to haves, but not essentials. The whole van has an internal and external speaker system. Once again, we use portable speakers, so not really that important for us. You've got lights all the way around, a massive awning that comes down, fold down table for when you're 
cooking outside or got the camp master out and you don't want to be indoors. So aesthetic and branding of the van, I actually quite like it to be honest. Uh, compared to a lot of vans, it's definitely unique. It has a cool look to it and you know, that's kind of what you want. You want something to kind of stand out and not look like every other van. Another interesting feature kind of from a functional but also a visual look is this black cladding here. That's actually a carbon fiber composite sheet that's stuck on the sides and actually helps prevent on, you know, scratches and tree branch and things like that and just protect the bottom of your van. So that's come in real handy. When we first got this van, it didn't have the carbon fiber composite on it. It actually had a kind of like the skateboardy deck, sandpapery stuff that you would stick onto the bottom of a skateboard, which to be honest, wasn't great and did bubble off quite quickly. It had air bubbles behind it, probably from when it was put together in a colder factory. So in the sun, air got bigger, expanded, and it was kind of all peeling off. So since we had the carbon fiber put on, which Coromel did replace for us under warranty, so no charges. That's one thing to say about Coromel. They have been really good at replacing, fixing, and generally doing everything we've needed on the van. Anything that's gone wrong, they've fixed. So that's been really good. So now we've got the carbon fiber sheet on the side and it looks good, nice little texture to it, and also really helped us prevent scratches. So, so that's pretty much the whistle stop tour of the outside of the van. I'm gonna hand over to Soph now and she can show you what's in the guts of this thing. one we didn't customize this van build at all so the interior finishes are not what we choose but we did specifically get a van from Brisbane and ship it down to Sydney that actually had this nice light white interior some people thought we were crazy because it would get real dirty but actually it's all this laminate material so it doesn't actually get that dirty and if it does you can wipe it clean so we like it because it's nice and bright some people might choose to have a diaper interior you know to hide the stains because there will be some so I wanted to show you the bathroom because it's massive. It's actually got a whole closed door, which is great for privacy. You just gotta be mindful to lock it off when you travel. We've had it a couple of times now where I I'm in charge of locking things off and it was probably me, not the door breaking. Uh, it wasn't locked off and we just have to get it repaired. So just be mindful that locks off in the open position and in the closed, so always do that. It's got your normal composting toilet, sink, tons of storage and Probably the biggest shower known to man in the caravan, let me show you. So it's grubby because we barely use it, but you could easily fit like two people in here. It's hot and cold shower. You've got a fan, which is really good to stop getting moisture in here and any um, mold. We actually are currently growing mushrooms. Look at she. This is what we do in our, in our shower. As if there wasn't enough in this bathroom, we've got a washing machine. So this pulls out. It's in there, it's connected to hot and cold water, but it's pretty small. It's two and a half kilograms, so a lot smaller than you'd have at home. So if you're gonna do a wash in this, A, it uses about 50 liters of water. It's gonna take you all day to do your clothing because you're gonna have to do about eight loads. I've tried it and I thought it was a great idea at first to save the money on a laundrette. Good if you need it, but if we were gonna do a custom build, we absolutely would not put it in. It takes up a lot of space, um, which could be used for so many other things. big as kitchens go but it doesn't have a ton of workspace when I first moved in I hated the fact that the workspace was here and then the hobs and everything are under here it's a bit of a clunky space particularly if you've got washing up we found this at Ikea it hides sturdy washing if you don't want to do your washing up straight away which is most of the time and it acts as a double space so that's awesome this has got three burners and electric we didn't use the electric a lot at the beginning, but actually staying in caravan parks, if you want to save cash, just use our electric, it makes the most of the extortionate fees that they charge you. One thing I don't love, and if we we're going to do a custom van, I would suggest insetting this, so then you can have a piece of uh, wooden top, or bench top, similar to this, over the top, and that will immediately double up the space. I've seen it in quite a few vans, and it's 
which just seems like a no-brainer. This also comes with a little grill. It runs off gas. Again, it's small, but when you want melted cheese on toast, it's bloody awesome. Um, also do grilled pumpkin in there as well. So we don't have an oven. It's fine. With anything, you get used to it. We do have a microwave. And if I want to do any baking, I now have found some recipes that I can do on the hob and in the microwave. So all in all, it's got everything we need. We don't have a filter on the tap. So we, this all comes straight through the freshwater tanks and we run a, um, a filter on our hose pipe. So everything that comes through into the van is filtered. It costs us about 28 bucks from Bunnings, super affordable and you replace it about once a year. Cupboard space, what can I say? Cupboards are cupboards. There's tons of storage in this van. So I'm gonna say the word storage a hundred times in this video. You can't fault the amount there is. Again, if you've got a lot of storage, if you're like us, you're just gonna fill it. So pantry in here all the way down. And on this side is all our tech gear. So all the way down to the floor, exactly the same as this side. Couple of things on the cupboard. So these are obviously all your standard drawers, um, but they do have these latches. So if I was to close this, if we are going off road, it's not gonna open, except when we first got the van, the latches on here were these really small plastic latches, really not fit for purpose. They put them in a lot of vans um, and probably again use error because I might not have checked all the cupboards. They did fly open in a couple of times when we were going off road. So they've Coromos replaced them with metal ones, which are super sturdy, um, no issues. But obviously in your pack down, let's just make sure your cupboard's closed. <laughs> uh, don't mention these windows, they are awesome. They've got uh, locks so you can click them a little bit further and further. And then you just pinch them in and they shut and they lock off really easy. I think every caravan comes with fly screens and if they don't then make sure you get them because you'll need them. I think it's pretty standard. Um, these are great because generally we have our windows open all the time. Um, what I hate about these and a bit of a tip is these ones are fabric. You can get them where they're um, sort of wipeable and for some reason they didn't put them in as, I don't know if they put them in any coral malls but I would certainly if I was going to do a van make sure these are wipeable because particularly in the kitchen you're cooking anything from like, grating a carrot it sprays up here and we've got marks on it so if I ever replace these I'll get the wipeable ones because it's really easy to change them over and uh, it just makes sense. <laughs> One thing to note about the windows is the screws, and they're actually loose now, the screws on the latches um, come undone when we are on corrugations so it just becomes part of your your checks that every now and again you could just go around and tighten all your bolts. Fridge freezer combo is massive, it's full height, um, it runs off gas um, 240 and the car battery. You can turn the temperature up and down and it's got an auto switch so it will automatically run off 240 if you're plugged in and having such a large fridge is awesome because A it means you can go off grid for way longer than if you had a small fridge um, and also in some places like Exmouth they only have an IGA and it's really expensive so you can fill up before you get there and then not have to go shopping for as long. The bed is A really comfortable. We actually have a memory foam mattress under here. Came as standard and it's it's really really nice. This one is really big. It's a funny size. I think all caravan sizes is like this where it's a double and then a queen so not any bedding fits but that's just the way it goes. It's actually got an extender, so at the back here there's about this this thick um, extra memory foam. So if you are short and you don't need it, you can then push your mattress in further so you'll have more walk around space around here. Over bed windows, really nice, extra light plus the breeze on a hot night is really good. Always nice too if you've got a good view then you can lie in bed and just look out of the window. Storage, this is our wardrobe, so tons. <laughs> Again, storage, loads, hanging space in here, which you can use or not use. So plug sockets on either side, you've got 12 volt and 240. One thing about this van is storage and plug sockets. They're everywhere. Dining area, come office, 
come eating area, come living room, come kind of the space where we spend most of our time. This is where we edit all the videos. 240 volts under here and you've got 12 volt on there. Also, you've got a car charging one, which is really useful because it powers that 12 volt fan, which I'll talk about in a second. Tons of space. Um, these actually come with little fold out things. This doesn't fold down into a bed. This caravan only sleeps two. It probably would be cool if it did, but we've actually never needed it. No one's ever come to stay and needed to stay in here. People bring a swag or they're traveling in their own vehicle. So we don't need it. We went for fabric over leather, which is a, a hot topic, I think, with most people. Leather, obviously you can wipe down and clean, so really good for kids, but there's nothing worse than when it's really hot and sitting on leather. TV, we don't use it. We stream everything that we need. So again, we wouldn't put this in, but it came with it. So I think we've used it a couple of times. When we're somewhere that we board and also somewhere that we have TV signal, which is not very often. And lastly, this is our music system. It's all plugged in. You can put in a DVD if you got DVDs. It's pretty cool. Got a radio. Haven't tuned it. Again, it links to inside and outside. So in a pinch, if our portable speakers had run out of juice, then we could use this one. So air vents, straightforward. You've got a rain setting so you can get airflow in when it's wet outside and you don't get wet. They all also come with the fly mesh, which you can take off and clean if you need to, because sometimes you get bugs in there and dust and that sort of stuff. So super handy. Last but not least is the air con. So very grateful that we have it. It runs cold and it runs hot, so if you are in the snow, you can put your heater on. Downside to our one in particular is it only runs on 240 volt, which sucks. If I was going to get a van, there are a couple that you can get which run off your solar, and I've read they last between 5 and 8 hours, depending on what the sun's doing, so that's awesome. So I'm not going to knock it because it's nice to have it, but we have to be plugged into 240 to use it, so we have got a... 12 volt fan that we plug into our car charger, stick it here, and then we can have it facing that way when we cook and have it this way when we are sleeping because this fan doesn't come with any 12 volt fans. So I'd say that's a bit of an oversight now living in a van for two years. If you're gonna have an off-road van, you're probably gonna be off-grid a lot and therefore you're not gonna be plugged into 240. So if you can't use this, they should really just install some 12 volt fans, but. Under the bed. Not where all the magic happens. Well, to be honest, where all the magic happens. So under the bed, we've got effectively two drawers for all our shoes, which I would think about getting rid of to make more space under here for more batteries. However, we've got our 2000 watt inner drive inverter there on the left, which is run in parallel or series. I'm still yet to remember how that works. To our two deep cycle batteries, which are currently connected up to our external solar with the crocodile clips. We've got our Camex braking system here on the left, our solar controller for the solar coming in off the roof, our Waitai security system, which is a GPS tracker for the van and also an immobilizer. So if it's set and someone tries to tow the van off, it just slams on the brakes and they can't actually get the van anywhere, which is a upgrade we put into the van that didn't come stock. And it's something we really wanted at the start because we were worried about having the van stolen. However, in hindsight, it might be something that we probably wouldn't have spent the money on because we don't end up setting it that often anymore because we're a lot more comfortable and confident in leaving our van unattended and it not being stolen. Famous last words, I know. Then we've got our projector battery charger. So that, when we're plugged into 240 volt or shore power, that will charge all our batteries for us and then run everything through here. And then this all connects to our kind of power control hub here. Now I have seen better power control hubs in other vans. I think a touch screen one that just has everything on there would be good. This is a little more old school, but still perfect for our needs. So we've got our water indicator showing us how much water we've got in the tanks. We've got our fuses, and then we've got our battery management system, which shows us how many amps and watts we have in the power. At the moment, we're running the inverter to power and charge a bunch of things. So. It's still at 13.6, which shows how good the solar and sun is. Things I would do differently with this van, like I previously mentioned, I'd remove these two drawers, which are currently full of shoes. Equal amounts of shoes as well. So, so it doesn't have a huge amount of shoes for, a, for a, a lady. I've actually probably got more shoes, which I won't admit to, but I'd remove these two drawers. 
and then chuck two more batteries in here, potentially lithium ion instead of deep cycle so that we can store more of the sun's energy when we are remote off grid camping like we are at the moment. Inverter has been amazing. 2000 watts has been fine for what we need. If you are trying to use it to power heating elements like toasters, hair dryers, and anything that you need to like really heat up, that draws a lot of power. So you wouldn't want anything less than 2000 watt, but that's been perfect for us seeing we use it for mainly charging things and running Starlink, etc. bulk of the outside and inside tour done but I think one of the most important things that we need to do in this video is kind of go through our learnings mm. pros and cons would we buy this van again questions people have asked us when we were saying we're gonna do a van review and then yeah just anything generally that we haven't covered in the video so far first things first what do we think of the van I love it you love it it's home <laughs> it is home after having the van for two years it is really good for our needs it is pretty perfect for us yeah it's really spacious so or having this much space to work and actually live in the van i think if we were just traveling you could have a smaller setup or a smaller space but for living in the van and being in it 24 7 i wouldn't want to go any smaller than a 21 foot van yeah and that's something we discussed when we were working out what rig to get whether it was a mm -hmm just a, a van, whether it was a rooftop tent, whether it was a trailer tent, caravan, truck conversion, all these things. What it came down to for us was we wanted somewhere that was enclosed, out of the wind. You could have lots of power, you could work from, and kind of being in, in it for two years, you need somewhere where you can get away from the elements and, and just work. And having like a dual couch here where we can work on either sides of our computers has been perfect. That's the caveat. This van is perfect for us as a couple traveling. If we had kids, we would have to change our van. Would you buy it again? Well, if I wasn't like, if I didn't want to have children, then I would buy this van again, but I would want to customize it and add and tweak things. So I would want more solar. I would want more batteries because the batteries don't always last until the evening if we're using it throughout the day, if we well, don't get a lot that, of solar. Yeah, that's an important point. We are very energy heavy charging cameras, laptops, working on the road, screens, drones. Starlink now needs uh, 240 volt with the inverter. So if we were to change the van, so in answer to the question, we buy the van again, yes. But I'd it recommend is, it. I definitely recommend it. Mm. It is our first van though, so we have limited other vans to compare it to, but it has been kind of faultless in a lot of ways. We would go probably double the battery capacity and potentially lithium ion if we went again for the, for the weight, although it's a lot more exy. And we have 300 watts of solar on the roof and 150 watt solar blanket, but I would just amp up the solar as much as possible. There's plenty of space on the roof. Plenty of space on the roof. We could just get bigger solar blankets and then follow the sun round with them. So it hasn't been a problem. It works for us, but it'd be nice not to have to worry about if you charge the laptops, the drones, have Starlink on for the day and so on, that when you get to the night, your batteries are low and you have to then conserve power. Yeah. So that's something we definitely change. Two other things I think you've touched on is internal shower, so much space that can be utilized for something else. And the washing machine. <laughs> and the washing machine. We just don't, don't need a washing machine in the van. It's superfluous to our needs. Probably change, if we're gonna change anything else, might, oh. might put in an outdoor kitchen. Outdoor kitchen would be nice, although we do have the Camp Master we can put on yeah. the back of the Ranger, which we use a lot. Probably get rid of the TV and yeah. the internal speaker and external speaker setup just because we prefer to have Bluetooth speakers, portable speakers to take with us. So if they're the worst things, that's not too bad. No. What do we know now that mm -hmm. would help us when buying a new van? More solar. <laughs> more solar, more batteries. <laughs> check warranties. We've been really lucky yeah. with this van, buying it dealer new. If you buy a new van, 
you kind of got to expect that things will break. They always will when they when they make these things. If you're taking it off road and you're doing corrugations and you know more gnarlier four wheel drive tracks. I'm not talking gnarly gnarly four wheel drive tracks, but just corrugations, lots of divots and you know doing things with a van that you wouldn't do with a single axle kind yeah. of cruiser van i would say the warranty has been super helpful coromel have been amazing and i'm not just saying that in everything that's gone wrong they have fixed no questions asked and we haven't paid a thing you know the things that have broken mm -hmm. in full fairness are when the van came stock standard it had flexible solar panels that stuck to the roof like straight to the roof now, if you're ever thinking about your solar setup, you we've learned the hard way that you don't want flexible solar panels stuck to the roof because solar panels can actually burn themselves out if they get too hot. So when they're stuck to the roof in 40 degree weather around Australia, which you get a lot, they just burn themselves out. So what Coromel did, free of charge, replaced it with two glass solar panels offset off the roof with an air gap and they've been perfect ever since. Yeah, great. But we had no idea when we were buying it. We thought, oh cool, yeah, they stick to the roof, that's fine. They're meant to be in the sun all day, so surely they can handle heat. Yeah. Apparently not. You do need an air gap so air can get under and cool the solar panels. And solar panels actually work better when they are a lower temperature and high heats, they are less efficient, which is crazy when you think about <laughs> what they're meant to be doing. Other things that are broken, drawers. Yeah, the latches on the door, the fastening for the latches were plastic and quite small when we first got the van. Um, so on occasions, whether it was user error, me not closing them, or whether we were just going over corrugations, we'd come in a couple of times and find the drawer fully open with cutlery everywhere. So Coral have replaced them all and put metal latches on, which again, if you're building your own van or you're customising it, just get the metal ones because I mean, yeah, we've so had they, no problems since. They, the actual latches on the outside are really nice metal really sturdy but on the inside there's a little plastic clip that holds the drawer in when it's closed and, and and locked they were plastic and with weight in the drawers and full driving they were they were good but then eventually a couple would snap and the drawers would just fly out and we'd come into the van and everything would be everywhere so replacing them for little metal latches which unfortunately they only seem to do when the plastic ones break which is a little bit frustrating for me but i would say just go through and replace them all with metal latches to start and you won't have that issue what else i mean internally the the frame the composite nothing has moved away nothing has you know microwave hasn't flown out fridge hasn't come off the walls haven't moved there's no air gaps between anything so you know the the frame is solidly built and the composite with the aluminium joint has held everything together really really well and we went in to see Coromel when we were getting things fixed and they had a van there with the composite yeah. that someone had flipped I think day one or day two like completely flipped their van on the side like horror crash and although the side of the van was scratched and the windows were, were smashed the entire structure was perfect and they were just refixing things that broke so it shows that these things can really hand hold up to being flipped on their side or on their head and you can walk on the roof and all those sort of things yeah. so it's a really sturdily built van for one that is frameless yeah and a quick one obviously not sponsored by Cromwell in any way but their warranty we obviously live on the road and when we've needed to take the van in sometimes for four or five days they've put us up in either a hotel or an airbnb mm -hmm. which has been awesome otherwise we'd have had to fork that out separately so that was a really nice added bonus for us plus it meant we got to stay in an airbnb with more room and a kitchen which was amazing yeah, we really can't fault the team at Coromel. And who's our who's our main man? Lee. Lee. Lee at Coromel. Customer service. Customer service. Point. That guy is just like Lee the legend. Old school customer service where it's like, let's if it's broken, let's fix it. Don't worry about it. Uh, let's not charge them. Let's just get it done. And Lee is is a star there. So if you ever get anything fixed and have a Coromel, ask for Lee. He's the boy. Or the man, sorry, he probably doesn't want me to call him boy. <laughs> He's the man. Or would we change our setup completely? That's a great question. Would we get a caravan again? Since we've been on the road, we this have- a million dollar question. This is a million dollar question. Since we've been on the road, we have looked at everyone else's setup as you do. We've seen some cool vans. I haven't really seen any vans that I would necessarily swap for in a drop of a hat. I'm really interested in the zone campers. They mm -hmm. seem to be quite good. One thing that reminds me of is dust. 
red dust. Now, we went through the first year, almost, of having this van and were just amazed how there was no dust whatsoever coming into this van. However, that did change slightly when we did the Unandada and the Great Central yep. because we were driving for like nine hours Gerald's a day. Gerald to Uluru and then Uluru back. Yeah, to the driving east. for nine hours a day. On that, it was dusty, red gravel. We were going behind some road trains that we got stuck behind and they were just pumping dust at us. And we came back into the van and everything looked absolutely perfect. But then when we went through and opened the drawers, especially along this side, the kitchen side, they were like someone had taken cocoa powder and just dusted everything, just like completely inches thick. thick with red dirt. We took it into Coromel and what we found was that the wheel arches, the silicon along there just needed beefing up and a couple of tiny little gaps filled. And now that has seemed to have fixed the issue. We haven't had it since. However, we haven't done the Great Central Unidata True. track again. So, I mean, that's that's one thing, you know, dust is a huge one in a van. It hadn't been a problem and we don't think it's a problem anymore, but it's worth noting that, you know, seals around wheel arches and anything under the van, everything mm -hmm. else has been good, but just make sure, you know, the silicon is completely there and done before you start a trip. So that's kind of like a, a pro and a con, I guess. It's been really good. However, for a little while it wasn't, and that was really frustrating because now we're finding red dirt in hard to reach places forever. Our final thoughts on the van, full caveats, we might be selling the van in the near future, purely because we kind of want to experience what other vans are. We might even get a completely different setup and experience what that is. But from a pure review of what we think of this van, you know, structurally, suspension, even before they replaced it with this brand new suspension, the brand new suspension, higher lift, more capability, buttery smooth. But but even before, the wishbone suspension was great too. So you know, nothing has seriously broken that has made us think this van hasn't been built well. All the things are very minor things that would happen. We believe with most vans when you, you get them dealer new and they haven't really been broken in. So expect that when you buy a new van that that things will break when you put it through its paces, but you don't want those things to be major things. And having the really thick chassis, having the good weight distribution, dual axle, good suspension. Big payload. Big that payload. Helps. Really cool full driving hitch where you can literally hitch on at a right angle or, you know, almost jackknife the thing right to the back to get out of a really tight space if you have to and it's just pivots on those four wheels really, really well. So I guess my final thoughts on the van are that I would definitely buy it again. Yeah. It's been an amazing van and when we sell it, if we sell it, then we may find ourselves always arcing back to this one being like, oh, that Coromel was so good. I wish we, like we kept love. it. Yeah, first love. And we, we've got to caveat this because we're, we're going to be biased in our, in our final review because this is our first van. We don't have a lot to compare it to. And you find with anyone with their, their rigs, they kind of become attached to them over time and it's your home. So you do have a lot of yeah. positive feelings for it. But that being said, we could have had a lot of negative feelings if lots of stuff had broken and, and we had serious issues, which we haven't had. But yeah, if there is anything that we've missed from the video, if it was at all or you've got more questions, Leave us a comment. If you don't want to leave a public comment, then we're also on Instagram. Just, we, I, I try and message back the same day. Now we've got Starlink, I really don't have any excuses. So yeah, hands down, happy to answer questions. Hands down, there'll be things that we've missed or questions that you have that we really haven't covered in this video. Feel free to leave a comment, reach out. And yeah, if you're buying a caramel, let us know. Thanks for watching guys and for making it to the end. Feel free to shoot through any questions you might have in the comments. If we don't see you there, we'll see you on the road.